Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. There's so many places to invest in. In the next few weeks, we're going to be doing our market spotlights. Real estate markets that sound interesting for lots of reasons. Today, one of the strongest markets in Florida, Jacksonville, on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Are you looking to create sustainable wealth through agricultural real estate? Then look no further than Agro Nosotros. They're a sustainable specialty agriculture company with specialty coffee farming operations in Panama and fine flavor organic chocolate operations in Belize. Over the last four years, they've helped ordinary people to diversify outside of traditional real estate and into offshore agricultural real estate. They don't have your typical tenants, termites, and troubles. Their tenants are trees, and they grow and produce two hugely popular and proven products, coffee and chocolate. Through Agro Nosotros, you can own half-acre parcels in your very own specialty coffee or organic cacao farm turnkey managed on your behalf that produce passive cash flow for you and your heirs. And you can feel good about where you put your money to work. Agro Nosotros has socially sustainable programs that provide living wages, improved accommodations, and a steady channel to market to literally hundreds of farmers. And so far, they've placed 61 kids in school. To find out more and see how you can get involved, email agro at realestateguysradio.com. That's agro, A-G-R-O, at realestateguysradio.com. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. With me, as usual, financial strategist, co-host, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. One of the things we like to do is get out and see the markets. And today, we're in Jacksonville, Florida, because we've been looking at this market for some time. It's got some unique stories. And we're going to see whether this is a market that makes sense for you. There's lots of reasons to like Jacksonville. And it's not all single-family homes. It's uh, the fourth largest economy in Florida. And you probably know that Florida is the number one state that baby boomers retire to when they decide they're gonna move when they become retirement age. Yeah, we definitely have been looking at Jacksonville for a long time and Florida in particular because it's a huge state population-wise. It's a no-tax state. And we've been saying for a long time, just based on the way the economy has been, the way the demographics have been going, we talk a lot on this show about inflation and real wage growth. And so businesses and people are going to be looking for places that they can go where they can have great quality of life, probably warmer weather, especially, you know, if you're living up in the Northeast, especially with what's been going on lately, I'm, you know, with the, with that, it, all of a sudden warm weather states look kind of interesting, but no income tax states look very interesting to people. So Florida has been the beneficiary of that for a long, long time. And there's very different markets. If you are familiar with Florida, you know, Southern Florida, Miami in particular is like its own little world. And then up from that, you have Broward County. And, and then further up, you have Central Florida. But Central Florida, you know, Orlando, Jacksonville, Tampa, St. Pete, all of that, that area right there, uh, I think it's my personal favorite as far as Florida goes, because I think that it doesn't quite have that same South Florida vibe. And it's got all the benefits of being in Florida. You're not too far from Atlanta. You got the big airport with Orlando, you know, and then again, any town that's got a major sports franchise is probably a pretty good town from a demographic point of view because the NFL or the NBA or Major League Baseball tends not to land in a place where there aren't people, where there's not discretionary income. So there's a lot of reasons to like a place like Jacksonville, and it's exciting to be here and actually check it out. Well, you know, one of the interesting things about Jacksonville compared to the other Florida markets is even though Florida is a recipient of a lot of retirees, not so much Jacksonville, a lot of employed folks in Jacksonville. There's a variety and a diversity in terms of uh, the economy. A lot has to do with the We'll learn about that today. But there's a great housing stock. And, you know, it's one of the areas that the hedge funds came in and acquired property. And a lot of the reason was the types of properties they could acquire were relatively younger properties, not brand new properties, but compared to other marketplaces and relatively cohesive in nature. And when the market was hit, like it, many were in 2008, there was opportunity. And so we saw uh, 
those folks uh, come in, but not in huge numbers. So while it did affect the market a little bit, um, it's left a lot of meat on the bone. And what you'll find out today is that whether you're a single family home investor that just wants to acquire a bunch of houses or you're interested in small multifamily or even vacation ownership, there's a lot of possibilities here. So we're excited uh, to be uh, in this market and to meet the gentleman that's going to be on the program next. He was referred to us by a longtime real estate guy's listener. We got talking about this market in these areas of Florida and he said, hey, I've got someone who's fabulous in this marketplace. You ought to meet him. So uh, we're going to do that when we come back. You'll meet Chris Funk today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Real estate investment advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Robert Kiyosaki, and I'm very excited about the next Real Estate Guys Summit at Sea Cruise. And I've worked with Robert and Russell for how don't how many years? Oh, 20 something years. Been friends all this time. We've always worked together. But come up with something, and it's a concept called an infinite return. And once you understand an infinite return, it means you'll never need money. I'm going to have Tom Wheel write my accountant, because you have to have an accountant to do it. But it's probably one of the more sophisticated investment philosophies or strategies. It's something I've used since I've been 27 years old. And once you understand an infinite return, you'll never need money again. You don't have to pay taxes again. And you can never, ever say again, I can't afford it. So I look forward to seeing you on the Real Estate Guys Infinite Return Cruise this March. Thank you. Join Robert Kiyosaki, Tom Wheelwright, G. Edward Griffin, Peter Schiff, and the Real Estate Guys on the 17th Annual Investor Summit Infinite Return Cruise. For details, just send an email to infinitereturn at realestateguysradio.com. That's infinite return at realestateguysradio.com. If you want to learn how you could potentially increase your net worth by over a million dollars and quit your job in just a few short years, listen closely for the next 60 seconds. This is Brad Sumrock, and over the past 16 years, I've helped thousands of people invest profitably in real estate, but not just any type of real estate. I specialize in helping people syndicate large apartment buildings so that they can be business owners and investors. In today's competitive environment, it's even more important than ever to leverage an experienced mentor, invest in your education, and have a team of advisors that has established relationships nationwide. And so many people right now seem to be struggling to find deals and then get them funded, but yet some rock students are thriving in today's marketplace. We've purchased nearly 7,000 units and nearly one half billion in purchase volume over the past 12 months. And with the new Trump tax laws, apartment investors are positioned now better than ever before to pay even less in taxes. To find out more, send an email to apartmentsnow at realestateguysradio.com and you'll get my recent presentation called Why Apartments Now? That's apartmentsnow at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Lawrence, your chief economist with National Association of Realtors, and you are listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Heard every weekend on this fine radio station all the time at realestateguysradio.com. We're in Jacksonville, Florida today, focusing on this amazing market. And uh, let's say hello to our new friend, Chris Funk. How are you, Chris? Great. How are you, sir? Awesome. Great to meet you. Been uh, at your office today, got the tour, met your team. Very, very impressed. Um, before we talk about what you guys do, let's talk about how you got into the real estate business. Sure. Absolutely. Well, it all started right after uh, right after the crash. So uh, my father and I were uh, in the dry cleaning business prior to uh, getting into real estate. And as with most businesses, uh, at the downturn, we lost about 20% of our revenue. Yeah. So, uh, so we decided we needed to really look into uh, some cash flow opportunities to get us through that, that time. And so fortunately, we had a, you know, a nest egg of some cash uh, set aside, and we went out and uh, we ultimately bought about 25 houses. So back then, it was, uh, there, there was plenty of inventory, plenty of supply of houses. Uh, and they were dime a dozen. Well, and the other part of it is because of the crash, not everybody saw that we were at the bottom, and this made sense. A lot of people were shying away from buying, and you guys saw the opportunity to say, hey, we could put some real estate in our portfolio, and it's kind of on sale right now. Well, exactly. And, and you know, really, at the time, I wish I could say that we were, you know, super smart and knew that it was going to come back. But, you know, we were just 
looking for cash flow. You yeah. Know? So, you know, we saw, all right, well, we can go, we can buy these houses, we can renovate them, we can rent them, and and we can and we can uh, live off of the the proceeds from yeah. the, from the rental income. So that was really how it started. We then decided that we would tell some friends and family about, you know, everything that had gone on and, you know, how well that portfolio was doing after we renovated about 25 houses. And, uh, and so as it naturally happens, people are looking for deals, particularly in that time because everybody was running scared. So, uh, so the yield side of that business is really what, uh, what brought everybody out of the woodwork. And so uh, we ultimately uh, built a portfolio of about 125 houses uh, with our, our money and friends and family money. And we decided, hey, it's great. Uh, cash flow is great. And there's plenty of supply. So let's see if we can sell this and do it all over again. And uh, at that point in time, there was still so much blood in the streets that the institutional investors were not ready to pay any sort of premium for renovated product. And we, of course, knew how much time, effort, and energy we put into buying the property at the foreclosure steps, renovating it, leasing it. So we weren't about to sell it for our investment basis. Sure. <laughs> uh, but so through that process of trying to sell these properties early on, we, we got introduced to uh, a great group of guys out of New York that uh, supplied us with a lot of capital that really spurred our growth. Well, it's a great example of just how business works. You go out and you prove a concept, first by buying some houses in your own portfolio, bringing on some friends and family. Now you have enough homes that at least you can say the market works and this model works. And now you just add additional capital and you guys were able to expand uh, quite impressively. That's exactly how it happened. So we uh, we did a, a fee based development for this uh, this New York group, and uh, things went very well. And it was a it was a rapid uh, rapid growth for us, as you mentioned. You know, we went from buying fifty houses a year to buying fifty houses a month. Yeah, and uh, and it and it really. Uh, it really made us scale out quickly, you know, scale out our property management services. As I as I told you during our tour earlier, you know, the, the property management was really the area that we struggled with the most in the beginning because we couldn't find anybody that really we felt had our best interests in mind, you know. Always a challenge. You buy a property based on the market and there's a good tenant base, but someone's got to lease it up. Someone's got to make sure the tenants pay. And and I would think most of our listeners, that's not them, right? Especially, you know, I like to say live where you want to live and invest where the numbers make sense. You don't have to buy in your backyard if you don't have a great backyard to buy in. But someone's got to do the work and love property managers who do a good job. There just aren't enough of them, it seems. And I know you guys struggle with that a little bit to the point that you decided to you'd get in the business. We did. We did. And it was, uh, you know, at the time, it was really, again, out of necessity. It wasn't something that we had grand plans of building a large property management company that we have today. But it was necessary because we could not operate the rental investment model without having good property management in place. Now, another thing you guys have done, and we'll talk more about property management before we're done because that's important. In fact, we're going to meet your general manager and learn about that side of the business. But let's talk about how you find more inventory because at first, it properties were everywhere. There's blood in the streets. As that's changed, you've now actually gone to a model where you're building property for investors to own. Talk about that part of it. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so as the inventory started to go away, uh, we realized that there was such an opportunity still in this asset class. And, you know, we, we figured out where the weaknesses were of what we were doing, which is the older construction homes, which is still, you know, bread and butter in our business, but they come with maintenance and, you know, some additional costs that come with owning a house that was built in the 1950s. Yep. No matter how much you renovate that house, you're still going to have more maintenance than you are in a new construction house. Sure. So as the market started to increase, uh, we started to take a look at building new homes. And what we found is that, you know, a new home on a gross rental yield basis may be less attractive than an older construction home from a gross rental yield perspective. Right. However, Just so no investor left behind a home that you buy on the resale market, you guys do a little rehab in the disparity between what it rents and what it sells for. It's going to be different than a brand new home, brand new home. You're buying the land and subdividing and new utilities and construction. And so the rent ratio might not be the same. Exactly. So the, the gross yields were, you know, probably three to 4% 
uh, spread. Mm -hmm. However, because the new construction homes come with such limited maintenance cost, the net yields were within a half a percent of each other. Okay. And so, you know, what we, what we determined was, well, Hey, you know, now we're in a market where it makes sense to build new construction homes for rent. And, you know, every, everything up until that point, we had been buying homes based on the uh, discount to replacement cost yep. that, we, that, we were, that we were seeing in the market. Well, when, when there was no discount to replacement cost, then it made sense to build. So long story short, uh, we started buying land positions. And, uh, and the reason that we bought land positions as opposed to lots is the most of the distressed lot inventory in the Jacksonville market was gone. So while the other national builders were building through that, uh, that product, we had to go develop our own lots to, to have inventory to supply for our investors to buy homes. You know, so if you don't have land, you can't build a house. Well, and I think one of the things people understand about new construction is you don't just finish the last house and then start looking for a piece of land, right? You have to be doing that in advance. There's the whole entitlement pr- process and utilities and dealing with the cities and the counties and all that. So there's a, there's a lead time. Yeah, it's, it's about a year and a half to two years that it takes from the time that we identify a property through rezoning that property so that we can actually develop a subdivision because most of the plots of land you find aren't zoned properly. Right. And then there's another six months of engineering uh, that has to take place. You know, the the uh, the counties and the states are, you know, very particular about their water and their water management districts and uh, their development standards, which is why, you know, why we have such great infrastructure in the United States is because, you know, they, they go through the, the time and effort to make sure that we're doing it right. Yeah. But it is time consuming. So, um, so we ended up, uh, we ended up doing, uh, acquiring a lot of land and going through this process. So we, we really stepped out uh, on the limb about as far as I like to go uh, when, we, when we first got into the uh, new construction model uh, because we had to buy a lot of land that we were two years out from ever even being able to build a house on. Yeah. But that's part of seeing where the puck is going, right? Realizing that we, there was a time when you could buy below replacement cost. You can't build then. But now there is a demand and Tennessee has been strong and so forth. And when you can control the cost, you know, it's this debate we always have with investors. Like the bird in the hand, I can buy a house that exists today and I can have an inspection that I know it's structure and everything's is set. But when you build it from the ground up, you have 100% control over everything. Exactly. And and that really, you're you're hitting on the key component that we love so much about new construction, uh, which is we know in our older construction homes what the highest expense items are. You know, So give a turn in an older construction home that maybe has carpeting in the bedrooms. Well, you're going to spend $1,500 to $2,000 replacing that carpeting on a turn. Yep. And very rarely, you know, are you able to to keep that carpeting into the next tenant? And if you are, it doesn't look brand new. So when we when we do the new construction houses, we put vinyl plank floors throughout everything. So which look great, but they wear better from a tenant perspective. Exactly. You know, the tenants walk in; they're faux wood planks. The tenants feel like they have hardwood floors throughout the entire house, which is a huge selling point for our leasing agents. And they wear, you know, they, they they wear for a very long time. And if the tenant somehow manages to damage one of the panels, you can pull one out and replace it for a couple bucks instead of having to replace the whole room for it. It's hard to do, but some tenants can figure it out. They can, <laughs> exactly. they can figure so, it out. Sure. Yeah, so true. We've, we've definitely seen some things that uh, made us scratch our heads. Now, let's talk about new construction from the point of view that that's something that's attractive to tenants, right? Tenants see that, but also to owners. You know, if we look at an appraisal, we see the age level life method of the property is after some point, you know, it's going to take more to keep it up and eventually the house is going to wear out. I buy a new house. That's a pretty good place to be as long as the numbers work. But when you guys are building, you're building specifically to a tenant base. And yet it's probably obvious, but when a builder builds to sell to an owner occupant, they can make more money than when they sell to an investor. So help us understand how it would make sense from your company's point of view, to sell most of your inventory to investors, even though you might not make as much money. Sure, absolutely. So investors have been our lifeblood 
ever since we started in our real estate business. Yeah. You know, we we are investors ourselves, and we built our property management company as a company that is built by investors for investors. So that's where we feel most comfortable. And I and I personally feel most comfortable having a conversation related to yields as I do maybe something more freely about, you know. <laughs> Which way the sun comes in the window in the exactly. morning. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so it, it's part of it is just a comfort level of myself and my father. We're pretty analytical folks, and uh, and so it's easy to talk to analytical folks, and those are investors. Yep. But from a profit margin perspective, you know, why do you do that? Well, we look at it from a long-term perspective. You know, every, every property that we sell, we want to maintain management of that property, and we want to become part of the, the, the family of that investor. And we want to be there for them, whether they buy properties from us or somebody else. You know, we want to be there to manage those assets for them, no matter where they come from. So our end game is really a, a much longer term objective. Uh, we don't want to just sell a house and go away, uh, which is which is what uh, you know most traditional builders would do. Uh, we want to be there in the long run, and we might not make as much up front, but we'll make a little bit of money with you every year. And and we look at it if the investor is making money, they want to continue to have us manage the property. We can make a little bit of money that way, and we can all be happy for a longer period of time. Yeah, I think it's a, a key thing for our listeners to understand that because a lot of real estate transactions are just transactions oriented, right? Hi, how are you? List my house and they're on to the next city. But investors do more business more often. So even though you might make a little less per transaction, you're building up long-term business, which is good for you guys, but it's also good for the investor. If I know I can count on you and you've got two, four, eight, you know, pick a number of uh, properties in uh, that you're handling for me, that's the kind of relationship people are after. And, you know, as Russ and I uh, talked about before we had you on, you didn't come looking for us. We didn't come looking for you. We got referred to you guys from one of your raving fans, which is our favorite way to meet people that we call providers in our world, that uh, someone says, hey, these guys are doing a great job. So part of that great job is making sure that the house works uh, in terms of ownership and, and care and so forth. And then second is is the management. So let's talk about kind of the range of price and rents and so forth in the market. Someone who's never been to Jacksonville, what kind of uh, are the parameters for both the resale houses that you guys do and, and the new construction? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, I can start with the resale houses. And, and right now, um, we are not buying at the foreclosure steps anymore. The inventory has just has gone away. Yep. So most of our resales uh, are typically... Investors that we are managing for or that we know in the market that are looking to trade portfolios. Yep. So, which honestly I find to be uh, great for the investor buyer because it's a tenanted property. Because right now, so much of the trade force, you know, the labor force here in Jacksonville has gone to new construction that it's hard to find folks at a reasonable price to renovate houses yep. in the market today. So, you know, the, really the only reason that an investor would want to renovate a house and go through all the pain and, you know, blood, sweat, and tears of, of that process is if they're going to be in the house at a lower cost basis. And what we're finding is that folks that renovated houses two or three years ago are still at a lower cost basis than you could be today if you were buying that foreclosed house and renovating it yourself. Yep. So most of our transactions related to uh, what we would call older construction product revolve around uh, investor to investor sales. You know, so it's not something where we're selling, which we're happy to, you know, we're happy to have our agents get involved and, you know, make those connections. And uh, we do that every day. Yep. Uh, but just for clarification, that's, you know, that's not something that we're even able to provide new product for. It's, it's more product trading amongst our friends and other investors. Yep. In, in regards to pricing of those uh, of that product, you know, it's it's trading really obviously depends on the rent and the area that the house is in. So everything's location. So, you know, I would say probably the lower priced houses are somewhere in the fifty to sixty thousand dollar range and um, uh, of the older construction, and maybe up to one forty, one fifty um, in some of the higher rent neighborhoods, and then. Uh, you know, getting into new construction, the new construction is all over the board. So uh, we build not only single family homes for new construction, but we also build duplexes, triplexes, and quadruplexes. And, um, and, and really, each of those uh, is for a different investor. So, uh, you know, a single family home that we build for rent, you know, we're typically building that in a neighborhood where we're also selling some houses to retail home buyers. Sure. Retail home buyers aren't really our 
main objective. But if we're building a 40 house subdivision, maybe we only want to sell 15 or 20 uh, homes to investors so that the, it's not a complete rental neighborhood. Yeah. And so that forces us to sell the rest of the houses to retail home buyers, which, as you know, is not always our favorite thing to do. Right. But, um, but it helps keep the values up yep. long term for our investors because those, uh, those retail home buyers will then be selling that home as the market increases and it's driving up the, uh, driving up the comps in the neighborhood for our investor buyers. So if they decide that they want to get out at some point, they'll have the opportunity to sell to a, a retail home buyer from their investment product. So I would say that's the biggest benefit of our single family homes. They have a single family new construction homes, I should say. They have a uh, they have a, a slightly lower cash on cash yield than our multifamily product, but it's it's a home that can then be resold to that retail home buyer. So you have a much greater chance for appreciation and market appreciation. Our uh, quadruplex product is really it's an investment, you know, so it's an investment grade real estate asset. That's what it's always going to be traded at. Yep. We get some economies of scale in building those. They're larger buildings. So the mobilization fee gets spread out across more square footage. Um, we are able to uh, typically do a little bit more density in uh, in the, the quadruplexes. So the land cost gets reduced slightly, all of which then results back into a higher yield. So the uh, cash on cash yield for any of the multifamily is a little bit higher than the single. But, you know, you're giving up some of that appreciation. You know, you may get some appreciation from market and, you know, caps getting compressed, uh, but it's not going to be as drastic as you would get in a single family home. Well, it speaks to your exact point, which is the different products for different types of investors. If I'm primarily an equity investor and I see, hey, this market makes sense, new product tends to go up over time, I'm going to have a five-year hold and sell, that's different than someone says, no, I want to put a bunch of fourplexes in my portfolio and hold them forever. Exactly. So it's great that you guys have uh, both of those things. And um, price range for the new single families, what does that look like? Sure. So in uh, in the Jacksonville market here, anywhere from 150000 up to about $200,000. Uh, so we, we do everything in our power to keep those uh, keep those prices under that $200,000 mark. Uh, it just seems to be a ceiling that uh, people like to stay below when buying a single family investment asset. And it also enables that investor to then, you know, take advantage of that kind of second home move up market, which is which is really the the market that we buy in, you know, the areas that we buy and build in um, later down the line. And uh, from a duplex, triplex, uh, quadruplex standpoint, um, it goes it goes up from there. I think the the highest price quadruplexes that we have in Jacksonville right now are about five hundred and fifty thousand. We're in Jacksonville, Florida today talking to Chris Funk. One of the most important things in owning any investment property is management. We come back, we'll talk property management. And we'll also play Real Estate Trivia next. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Live nationwide, you're listening to the Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Garrett Sutton, Robert Kiyosaki's asset protection attorney and the author of Loopholes of Real Estate and Start Your Own Corporation. As an American or foreign-based investor in U.S. real estate, you know we are a litigious society. You know that you need to protect your real estate, paper, and bullion holdings with the right mix of LLCs and corporations. Our firm, Corporate Direct, not only forms these entities, but importantly, we properly maintain them too. If you fail to follow the corporate formalities, you can lose it all in an instant. Corporate Direct is your source for LLC protection and maintenance in all 50 states. Visit CorporateDirect.com or call 800-600-1760. Mention the Real Estate Guys for a free bonus. That's 800-600-1760 or CorporateDirect.com. We look forward to assisting you at CorporateDirect.com. Forbes rated Memphis the best cash flow market in the nation. And our good friend Terry Kerr at Mid-South Home Buyers has been the premier turnkey rental property provider in Memphis for over 13 years. With an A-plus rating for the Better Business Bureau, Terry has renovated over 750 houses. Real Estate Guys listeners have snapped up hundreds. Discover what these satisfied investors already know. Mid-South's properties are completely renovated with a one-year warranty and a lifelong rental guarantee. They're affordable, well-managed, and easy to own. Perfect for beginning investors and veterans alike. 
Get in on the action. Contact Terry and his team via email at midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Frank Holmes, Chief Investment Officer and CEO of U.S. Global Investors, and you are listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. Hey, just a few cabins remain for the 17th Annual Investors Summit at Sea. If you're going to go with us, you got to decide quickly. Get to the website at realestateguysradio.com and check the button that says Summit at Sea. We're in Jacksonville, Florida today with a market spotlight talking to Chris Funk. And in a minute, you'll meet his general manager, Chandler Janger. She handles all the property management for the many, many properties that they sell here. Before we get back to that, it's time to play real estate trivia. Your chance to win a prize by knowing today's real estate trivia question. Of course, it's going to have something to do with Jacksonville. As soon as you hear the question and think you know the answer, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. That's trivia at realestateguysradio.com. The first person with the right guess wins a copy of Second Chance by Robert Kiyosaki. Last week on the show, we had CPA Tom Wheelwright, and we asked this. Maricopa County in Arizona is the state's most populous county, with around 60% of the Arizona population living there. Which Arizona county is second in population? Well, the answer is Pima County in the south-central region of Arizona. The vast majority of the Pima County population lies in and around the city of Tucson, and Pima represents around 15% of the state's population. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. Jacksonville, Florida was known by a different name until 1822. What was it? Yeah, what was Jacksonville called before it was called Jacksonville? If you think you know or just want to take a guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Include your name, the answer to the question, and your mailing address so that if you're the winner, we can send you a copy of Second Chance by Robert Kiyosaki. That's today's real estate trivia question. Now, one of the things we haven't talked about yet is the very market we're in and why it makes sense Jacksonville is a market to consider for someone who's looking for a place to own rental property. And um, maybe you can kind of hit the high notes on uh, what that's about. You've prepared a great report. Before we're done, we're going to invite the listeners to learn more and find out the details. But just just kind of the high notes about why Jacksonville makes such good sense. Sure. So Jacksonville, like much of Florida, experiences... uh fantastic growth year over year. So you might not know, but Jacksonville has had a a, ten, a double digit population growth every census since censuses have been being done. Yeah. Um, which is great. That's great for Jacksonville. It's great for all of Florida. Uh, but the the thing that uh, Jacksonville has that a lot of other parts of the state don't have relates to our jobs. So we we are really a working city. When you come and you tour some of these properties and you want to see some some of the houses that we have under construction and you're driving around town, you see people are doing something. You know, it's not it's not a town full of retirees. Uh, we've got a, uh, a very good financial services district. So companies like Fidelity National Title, um, Ameris Bank, Wells Fargo, all have uh, major corporate offices here in our in our city. Um, we have a, a huge industrial uh, side of our of our city. So we have one of the largest ports on the East Coast. Uh, companies such as uh, Coach have their worldwide distribution center here. Mercedes has a large distribution center. FedEx has a huge distribution center. Um, I could go on and on with names that uh, that, that you would recognize, um, which uh, you know, which really is driven by our, our port industry. And and then we have a huge military presence. So we have uh, both NAS Jacks and uh, and uh, Mayport here in in Jacksonville. And they're here to stay, you know. So these these are not uh, military bases that are declining. They're they're expanding their um, their ranks. So for all those reasons, I think uh, I think Jacksonville is a great place to be. And Chandler, how does that translate uh, on your side of the business? Who are the folks that are generally renting the homes that you have? I'm sure it's a wide variety. You have a lot of different types of products, but who are the folks that that uh, you guys see as your main tenants? Well, you're right. We do have a wide variety. I'm happy that we do. Uh, but if we have to generalize our tenants um, or the tenant base pool uh, would be uh, middle to upper middle working class Americans. Um 
from teachers to the military, medical professionals. We have a huge Baptist hospital. Uh, it's a very beautiful spot downtown on the water. So those are who we're seeing come in and, and lease our average uh, home that we have on the market. Awesome. Now let's talk about just some of the things that people often have about uh, questions like what about how much the security deposit is and do you allow pets and, and those kinds of things. Oh, absolutely. Generally, our security deposit is equal to whatever the monthly rent is. Okay. So um, based on credit qualifications, we may require two times security deposit to secure the home. Um, however, on a general basis, it's just one, whatever that's, we don't do first and last. It's, it's to move in. You have to pay your, your rent or prorated rent, and we have to have the security deposit on hand. Most of our homes, um, unless the investor specifically says otherwise, uh, does, uh, except up to two pets. Um, we get shot records and pictures of the pet to put on record to make okay. sure that, you know, it's it's for insurance purposes for the owner. We don't accept uh, what any pet that's on the Florida aggressive breed list. Many property managements are pulling away from that and accepting all pets, but um, and that's us for right now. That's how, how we are set up. Um, and it is a $350 non-refundable security deposit that the tenant has to pay. And that will obviously go on to the owner's account once it's paid and, uh, they get to keep that. So, okay. So it's like a pet fee. Yeah. We don't do the, we don't add to the monthly rent at this time, yeah. uh, a pet fee. It's just a, a base up to two pets. Now, um, as we talked earlier, uh, you're a, a member of the National Association of Residential Property Managers, which yes. is one of the things we suggest people check when uh, they're talking to property managers, because as we talked earlier, the variety and quality of property management is amazing. Uh, in my estimation, it is the most important job. I mean, I want to make sure I have a great property. I want to make sure it's built well and it's in a good neighborhood, but the rubber meets the road at, at property management. And so one of the things that that you guys have have hit on is by keeping that in-house, that helps you control the entire experience for the investor. So what is that experience like? How often do they get reports? When does the rent come in? Talk about those kinds of things. Oh, absolutely. So once they're onboarded, um, they will immediately, as soon as they, we send a welcome email and it really is a review of everything that we've talked about. If we're looking for some documents that are still outstanding, that'll be there. Um, there is a, a link that is uh, sent with that welcome email that the owners are able to go onto their owner's portal, which I like to call it a 24 24- seven online filing cabinet for the owners with property management. Everything that they need that they've ever sent me or um, anything to do with their tenants is there. So if they send me their insurance document, it's uploaded and they can access it at any time. Um, so their management agreement is there. Any Again, the lease agreements are there. They're able to look there. Their delinquency report is there, whether it's delinquent or not. If the house is occupied, they're able to log in and see if the tenant's paid. And if they're not, if there's any um, scheduled payments coming up and then the notes that the either collections or portfolio manager has put in there. So I really wanted it to be available to them so that they can log on and go, oh, they've got this. Yeah, That's really what I want because if you're going to invest and this is what you are, you do, we want you to have peace of mind. We, we recognize that a property management company can make or break your investment. And, and we want to make it because without you being successful, we aren't. Back to your actual question, which is uh, what else did they get? They also are sent, um, investors are also sent a weekly report from their portfolio manager. So though they can get online and see that, it's it's a snapshot um, that is sent to them if they're not logging onto their portal. So they're also getting an email for their vacant and occupied properties stating it's vacant. Is there a deposit on it? If so, when is the scheduled move in? Or this tenant is paid. This tenant actually isn't paid and here's why it's and what the notes are on that. Obviously, if they have any questions, they can use that portal to email, um, to send a message to their portfolio manager and have a conversation that way. But they also have their, they will have their contact, the portfolio manager's contact information, their phone number, their email. There shouldn't be a shortage of, of how to get a hold of us. All right. So sounds very user-friendly from that regard. And the fact that with as many investors as you guys have, there are some people that want to be communicated all the time. And there's some mm-hmm. people that just want to have the money deposited, right? Right. So um, talk about that part because you guys have a collection process and we talked a little bit about eviction and so forth, but that's going to be the exception, not the rule. Right. Um, when did they receive their money and how is it accounted for and all that? 
Well, they also get a monthly statement. So uh, we pay our owners the month after rent collection. We do that for accounting purposes and collection purposes. I don't ever want to promise the the owner that the tenant's going to pay on time because on those uh, moments where they don't, then now I've got an upset owner. So my my whole drive is to not upset an owner. And to again, I, I keep reverting back to the expectations to set that up properly. So um, we do give ourselves in those cha- in those times where we have to collect um, that month to collect. So the first week after uh, rent collection of the next month. So in January, the owner is paid the first week of February. Um, they're paid electronically. And once that they get an email notification that that payment has come through and they can expect it into their account three to five business days um, at that moment also a statement is uploaded. So they're able to get, then that email goes to them as well, and they can look at their statement. It's broken up by property, so they know what income came in for this property, what expenses were for this property, and so on and so forth, and then it generalizes it in a summary as well. Um, management fees are broken out, so they know exactly what they've been paying. Again, we really want an investor to have peace of mind, and we really have tried to to make sure that we've set up the business that way. Awesome. Good stuff. So you deal with a lot of investors. What are the things that you wish investors knew before they come to you guys? Are there any frequently made errors or what are the things that uh, that you'd love investors to know before they before they pull the trigger? I have I have one. Oh, go. <laughs> I love clear communication. I love being straightforward and honest. Um, we do manage a lot of properties and a lot of owners. So when it comes to their portfolio manager and, and contacting them, one of the biggest things is setting up the expectation to allow them up to, uh, but no more than 24 business hours to get back with them. Okay. Uh, this business is um, property management, and anybody who is in real estate understands that it it has a lot of moving parts to it. Um, so on the weekends, I really want them to take that time off and refresh and come back ready to do it again the next week. So yeah. um, that's why I say the business hours. Um, if they want to work on the weekends or you know into the evening, that is their choice. But I like for the owners to understand to, to we want to look into it and we want to have time to reply to them individually and not be in a rush. So that's one of the biggest things for me. Great. I, I'm a spreadsheet nerd. So, um, you know, I, I really, uh, and it does, it goes back to expectations. You know, I really like to know that uh, whether they're doing it with us or whether they've done it before they come to us, that they've done a pro forma on the investment that uh, that they're making. Yeah. Um, you know, real estate is one of those where you can make a lot of money. I mean, there's... Uh, you know, there's probably more millionaires that are real estate investors in this country than any other business. Uh, but it's also it's a it's a business of you know nickels and dimes. So you know, and we need to understand that and understand that going into the process. Um, you know, particularly for our investors that are are using leverage. Um, you know, leverage is your friend. You know, particularly in this in this market. You know, with are still historically low interest rates. I mean, we all complain interest rates go up a you know a quarter of a percent right. here and there, but you know we're still probably at historically low levels of uh, of, of interest rates. So, uh, but for our our, our levered investors, I, I really want them to know what that cash flow is that they can depend on when they make that investment that it's going to come in, but also understand that a big portion of their cash flow is actually increasing their net worth. Uh, by the fact that it's reducing their loan balance every month that goes by, you know, I think that's uh, that's that's one of the areas that I just I just like everybody to be fully aware of as they go into this. It's not a uh, you know this is not a get rich quick scheme. Real estate business is not. Uh, you will make a lot of money in the long run, but it is it is a long run sort of game. All right, good stuff. Well, if Jacksonville sounds interesting to you, uh, you guys have prepared a really cool report. I read through it and uh, a lot of good information about the marketplace. And of course, that'll also uh, give you their contact details. You can find out what it takes to uh, get on the list for uh, new houses, resale houses, duplex, triplex, fourplex. Uh, And of course, if you've got a property already in this marketplace, uh, your uh, property management arm completely separate from that. So that's something you talk to folks uh, about as well. So all you're going to do is if you're interested in that, send an email to jacksonville at realestateguysradio.com. Jacksonville at realestateguysradio.com. You'll get that report. Thanks so much, Chris Chandler, for being on the program today. Really appreciate you coming. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. When we come back, I'm your host, Robert Helms. 
Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. Are you ready to profit in paradise? Hi, it's Robert Helms. And if you think real estate investing means tenants, toilets, and termites, think again. Located just a short plane ride from the U.S., a virtually untouched paradise awaits. The beautiful country of Belize. When you go to Belize with the Real Estate Guys, you'll spend four fabulous days discovering one of the most intriguing real estate markets I've ever seen. With its jungle rainforests, pristine beaches, and 81-degree turquoise water, Belize is one of the most beautiful places on Earth. Plus, it's considered one of the top seven tax havens in the world. Belize property is on the rise, and many experts think the best is yet to come. But don't just take my word for it. Come experience Belize firsthand at our upcoming investor field trip. When you join us, you'll discover the many reasons we love Belize, like tremendously undervalued beachfront land, super low taxes, ease of doing business, and so much more. Get the details at realestateguysradio.com. Just click on events. See paradise for yourself. Click events at realestateguysradio.com, and I'll see you in beautiful Belize. Hi, I'm Steve Forbes. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Listen up. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. You know, if you've been thinking about coming on the Investor Summit, it's time to stop thinking about it and get your cabin reserved. We're down to just a few remaining cabins for the 17th Annual Investor Summit at Sea. Leaves out of Fort Lauderdale. We visit four amazing ports and we have an incredible faculty, including sales legend Tom Hopkins, the amazing Peter Schiff will be celebrating Peter's birthday on board, G. Edward Griffin, author of The Creature from Jekyll Island, Adam Taggart and Chris Martinson from Peak Prosperity, Brian London, who edits the Gold Newsletter and runs the New Orleans Investment Conference, and of course, our great friend Robert Kiyosaki with us for the whole week. Make sure you're there, too. All the details on the website at realestateguysradio.com. We're in Jacksonville, Florida, and oh my gosh, so awesome to uh, meet Chris and Chandler. Yeah, you know, we say this all the time. We, you know, you start out and you, you pick out your personal investment philosophy and you think about what it is you're trying to accomplish as an investor, what you want, what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do. And then you look for a market that can actually deliver those types of results. And of course, Jacksonville, like any other market, has a personality. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons to like it, as we said at the top of the show. And of course, as you heard throughout the interview, uh, and one of the things that happens in the national marketplace is that as the primary markets get very saturated and it just the numbers start to not make sense, you know, you begin to look into secondary markets. And Jacksonville is certainly a major market, but it is uh, a market that, you know, people look at maybe after they've looked at Orlando, that type of thing. But then once you've figured out that market and you say, yeah, I'm super interested in this market, and we've been interested in Jacksonville for a long, long time, the heavy lift is trying to figure out a great team. And it's not just a great team, like, you know, somebody that can do a good job, but somebody that's scalable. And one of the things that I think is most impressive about what Chris and company have done is they built a scalable model. And that's really, really important, especially for people who are going to be syndicating. You know, it's one thing if you're going to fly out and you're going to buy one property or two properties. But if you're building a machine where you're raising a few million dollars and you need to buy properties by the dozen, you know, you got to have a team on the ground that's capable of sourcing that managing that and keeping that steady pipeline of deals coming. And that's one of the things I think I'm most excited about in forming this relationship with uh, Chris and their company here in Jacksonville. Well, you know, what's interesting about it is they have continued to grow and scale and they've set it up with a series of portfolio managers who all have multiple assistants and they can add to those teams and regularly do. In fact, one of the things that uh, hit me right off is the fact that they own their their building, which is huge, right? You're in the property management business. They own uh, their retail building and they're just about to take over another space where a tenant has been for the last few years. Uh, their lease is expiring uh, just in a couple of months and it's a good thing because they are bursting at the seams. So they're going to take over that space and continue to add. And that's important. Anytime you're looking at a service provider and what's interesting, I think, especially with, with Chris and, and his dad Carter is they were, they were not planning to be in the property management business, as Chris talked about, they just really had a hard time finding the kind of management solution that worked for them. And when they got a 
fairly big portfolio, got up to over 100 houses, are like, well, you know, I guess if we can't find it, we'll build it instead. And that's turned out to be a big blessing because now they're able to service the people that they sell to. And I think that's a huge point. Another point, though, besides just scalability, is the fact that they have a wider range than a lot of folks do. You know, you heard Chris talk about entry-level product in the $60,000 range. Not too many good, strong markets where there's prices like that, but also all the way up into the mid-100s. I think median price in Jacksonville is 160 something But they also do multi-unit, small multi-unit, two, three, four-unit buildings. And another part of their business that they've just started is their vacation rental business. So, you know, Know, Jacksonville's a vacation market. They have beautiful properties that are on the water. And that model's starting to make sense for them. So they really have a, a foothold in, in the marketplace. And uh, I think one of the unique uh, things to consider is the new home angle of it. Most landlords are buying, you know, product that's 20, 30, 40, 50 years old. And there's just some inherent challenges like Chris talked about. But I've always liked new property, especially when the entire neighborhood neighborhood isn't 100% tenants. Yeah, absolutely. I think when you think about buying a property, any used property, you always wonder what's going on, you know, under the walls, under the hood, if you will. You've got my, my two least favorite things are plumbing and electrical because you can't see them. They cost a fair amount of money to replace when they're bad. And you know, they're going to go bad because they have a shelf life. And then when you do replace them, you really don't get any credit for having done it. It's not something cosmetic. Nobody looks at it and goes, oh, that really increased the value. It's just kind of a given. So when you buy new, you know, you know that you've got good structural components on the inside. But I want to jump back to something else, uh, Robert, that you said earlier that I think is a really, really important nuance. And that's how these guys got into this business. They started out as investors trying to solve their own problem. That's so huge. And then when they came in and did it, their very first customers were friends and family. That's huge. Because it it tells you a little bit about their focus. Their focus was on first being investors and understanding what it was to be investor and solve the problems that investors have and having their own portfolio to deal with and manage right alongside yours. So right there, that's huge. Second thing is their very first customers are friends and family. So now you've got a bunch of people that you've got really strong relationships with. You've got to do a good job. And the whole concept of how they gravitated into the business is really impressive to me because it tells me they're adaptive. They take what the market gives them. They see opportunity. And as you were describing kind of how they've morphed into these different product types, that's a reflection of that type of leading thinking and being on the front end of what's happening. And and when I'm looking for somebody to have a relationship with, I'm looking for someone who knows their market cold, who cares about what they're doing for the right reason, that are eating their own cooking, but are also astute enough to evolve as the market changes. And when we looked at this group, we thought, wow, these guys just check all those boxes. Uh, This is going to be a great relationship. So it's been very, very impressive to get to know these folks and see what they're doing and looking forward to the future with them. Speaking of getting to know the market, make sure you order a copy of their market report. It's got great information on income, on median home price, average rents, change year over year, apartment size, all those kinds of things, and top employers, many things Chris talked about, and lots more. All you have to do is send an email to Jacksonville at realestateguysradio.com. You get a copy of that report and their contact details. So if you're interested in learning more, you can do that. Big thanks to Chris and Carter and Chandler and the entire team that made us feel so welcome in Jacksonville. We've got a great show for you next week. Until then, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys radio show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at beyourbank.com. Mid-South Home Buyers, low-cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the Resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys radio show.